I'll be showing 10 new features in Teams. This includes long time requests like scheduling a channel post, renaming the general channel and resizing your panes, but also big improvements to the calendar and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is a long time request and that's the ability to schedule when a post goes out for a channel. We've had this in chats, now it's come to channels. So I will click start post and I'll draft a message. Please be sure to use the new TPS report cover sheets. Now, I don't want this to go out over the weekend because I don't want my employees to get upset. I'm gonna send this for a Monday. So if I click plus right here, I can choose schedule message and choose when it goes out on. So we'll send it out on Monday at 8 a.m. You can change the date easily. You can change the time. I'm just gonna leave this as the default. And now it says select post to deliver on Monday, Feb 17th at 8 a.m. I can drop this down and cancel this if I want, but my message is ready to go. I'll click post. And now it's not going to go out until Monday at 8 a.m. The second new feature is another long time request, and that is the ability to rename the general channel. So I've got my general channel here in my team. I'm going to right click and choose edit. And instead of saying general, this is now the TPS report zone. Click save and check that out, it is now the TPS report zone. Note that it goes into alphabetical order here, so if you had general at the top, it's gonna rename and put it in alphabetical order. The third new feature is a major update to the Teams calendar. We've merged a bunch of the Outlook calendar into the Teams calendar. Now it's not on by default yet, you have to turn it on, but in the upper right, you should see a new calendar switch right here. And just to note, for education customers, this will be coming to preview very soon, so stay tuned, it hasn't fully rolled out yet. But for everyone else, you should see this new calendar switch and I'm gonna turn it on. That's going to switch me into this new Outlook calendar. Now, if you look on the left, it looks a lot like Outlook. If I have other calendars, you can see them. They show up right here, just like it would in Outlook. My date picker is right over here. I also have now these little drop downs for day, work week, week, month. I can even change the time scale. So if I wanna change my time scale to maybe 60 minutes, I can do that just like I can in Outlook. We'll change that back to 30. You can save some of your views. So if you have different views here, you can save your view and then switch to your view, similar to Outlook. I can go to one day, two day, three day, four day. So if I wanna have a four day calendar, I can do that. So a lot of those same options that you have in Outlook. I can drop the filter and I can filter by appointments, meetings, categories, all sorts of great stuff here. I'm not gonna show every single option, but just like in Outlook, all these different filtering capabilities. And then on the three dot menu, you can share this. So if I wanna share my calendar with another email address, I can go here and share with Alex and he can view all the details versus edit versus delegate. You can do delegates now from your team's calendar. I'm gonna say share. So that's shared with him, we'll close. If I go to the three dot menu, I can print my calendar. So just like in Outlook now, I can get a nice printout view of my calendar, show mini month, print detail agenda, and we even have calendar settings. So if I go here for calendar settings, all these great options. You can add time zones just like in Outlook. So I wanna add a different time zone. It's really easy to do that. You can add things like weather widgets here. You can say, I want that in Fahrenheit. Events from email, shared calendars, bookings with me. So just a ton of stuff. We'll click save and then close. And look at this, I have a nice little weather right here. Click here, oh, it's my area. It's always raining around here. So a ton of calendar view improvements. And lastly, even the meeting form itself. So when I click here, it has a nice little pop out. This looks a lot like Outlook. And I can double click to open up the full form. I see the availability here. Is it an in-person event or a Teams event? This form is very similar to Outlook. You have a nice rich space to do all your good stuff like emojis and attachments and loop. It's in-person versus Teams, response options. So a ton of updates and improvements to this new Teams calendar. The fourth new feature is another long time request. I personally like this one a lot. It's the ability to size your rail columns as well as the right hand side columns. So what do I mean? Right here, this is called the rail. And if I hover, I get a little splitter bar. If I wanna make that more narrow, if I don't want that wide gap, it's really easy to size that just like that with the click and drag. In the upper right, if I open up the channel pane, I can do this in chat as well. I can also size this. So if I scroll here, very easy to scroll and click and drag and make that really easy to have just the right look for you. And this is rolling out, I believe it's in public preview now, but this is rolling out globally, so if you don't see it yet, you should see it quite soon. The fifth new feature is a nice improvement for hyperlinks. So if I'm in a channel here, or let's say I just go to a chat, 
and I wanna send a message with a long hyperlink. So I'm gonna type a message down at the bottom. Now, if I'm gonna have a link to this calendar here, I wanna say, hey, check out the new calendar. I'll show a nice long hyperlink here. So here we are, this is the support page for the new calendar in Teams. I'll select this URL and Control C to copy. Now I'll go back into Teams, and normally I have to double click this and do Control K and then paste the link, and it takes a little bit of time. Now, all I do is I double click the word calendar and do control V, it automatically inserts that hyperlink without having to do all the control K. So you can see there it's a hyperlink and there's a nice little link to where it goes. You can see it renders right here. So a nice time saver. The sixth new feature is the ability to change where notifications show up in your main Teams window. I'm gonna go in the upper right and click the three dot menu and choose settings. And now I'm gonna go to notifications and activities. And if you scroll down, you can see display here. Historically, it's always been in the bottom right, but now you can choose notifications to pop in the top right, bottom left, or top left. Let's say that I put it onto top left here, and I'm gonna go back into my team. Now there's gonna be a new notification that shows up, and let's see what happens. Hey, in the upper left, it looks like Alex posted a new message to the TPS report zone. You can see how that has changed from the historical lower right. The seventh new feature is an update in chat. So I'm here in my chat with Alex and Ella, and historically, this right here that says shared, that used to say files. So that's been renamed for shared. So any of the shared files go right into here. So if we were sharing files in the chat like this, there's my file when I go into shared and you can see solar system and calendar that hyperlink show up in here. So it's just a nice rename, but it's really easy to figure this out now. The eighth new feature lets you record your name and how people can pronounce it properly, which can be common, including with my own last name. I bet a bunch of you don't know how to pronounce it properly. So if I hover on my name right here, you'll see this little microphone next to my name. I can also go in the upper right, click here, and say, view my profile. Same thing, there's a little microphone next to my name. So I'm gonna click this as record how to say your name. Add name pronunciation, let's click the microphone. Mike Thulfson. Click stop. I can listen to it. Mike Thulfson. That's a soft TH for those of you that didn't know. It's not Tolfson, it's Tholfson. Okay, I'm done, click save. Now there's this little speaker that shows up next to my name and other people who are logging in, they can click that little speaker and hear how I pronounce my name. The ninth new feature lets you customize skin tone for emoji reactions. So if I go to the three dot menu up here and choose settings, now I'm gonna go to appearance. And right here, there's skin tone preference. So by default, it's yellow, but there's all sorts of different skin tones that you choose to make it customized to how your thumbs up shows. The 10th new feature is a web improvement and it's joining meetings super fast. So I'm gonna go into the calendar here and I'm gonna open up a meeting that I have, TPS report status sync up. Now I will click join. Now the improvements are really around performance and when you click join now, watch how fast this joins into the meeting. Wow, that is super fast. It used to take a good number of seconds. Now it's probably a quarter second, half second, and you pop right in there. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.